Hi everyone, my name is Valerie Friedlander and I'm your host for Motherhood Unlimited, the number one summit for moms who want it all. Welcome and thank you for joining us. It is our mission to take the limits off motherhood and empower moms to have it all for their own unique and vibrant life. We believe that when moms learn to create where, who, and how they want to be on their mom life adventure, their happiness and overall life satisfaction increases and they become inspired and inspirational for their children and each other. Today, we are talking about how to take the stress out of feeding your family. Our expert is Jess Sherman. I invited her to share with you because of her work helping moms nourish a healthy family without depleting themselves in the process. Thank you so much for being here with us today, Jess. Thanks. I'm so excited. This is great. What a great mission. <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> So before we get started, let me tell you all a little bit about Jess. Jess Sherman is a registered holistic nutritionist who helps busy mothers simplify their lives and raise healthy kids by arming them with a powerful understanding of nutrition and the body. She coaches parents on infant feeding and offers dietary support for symptoms and conditions common to infants, children, and mothers, including digestive disorders, food intolerance, and allergy, picky eating, ADD, ADHD, autism spectrum disorders, anxiety, and postpartum adjustment struggles. Her upcoming book is called Raising Resilience, 36 Ways to Help Your Kids Relax, Learn, and Grow. Oh my gosh, I, I needed you when I had my kids. Let me tell you, we, we definitely had some intolerances um, and it was overwhelming. So I'm I needed me too. <laughs> I needed the now me back then. <laughs> Right? Yeah, that's, I, that's actually why I do what I do. I have a feeling there's the same thing. So why don't you tell us about your journey to taking the limits off of motherhood? Oh, it's been a journey. Uh, I have three children um, under the age of, that my oldest is nine. I have three little boys. And I guess to take it way back, I started as a teacher in my life pre-motherhood. Uh, pre um, I was a high school teacher. And so I've always been interested in, in children and working with children and working with people, working with families. And, um, and I've always been really interested in health and in development, personal development. And um, I, so I, I had this, when I was a teacher, I had this like continuing kind of dial monologue, I guess, in my, in my brain of like, how can I further help kids learn and how can I help them grow and why are so many struggling and what, what's the difference between a kid who's like really motivated and learning and on this, you know, super trajectory and the kid who's like falling off the rails and struggling and having behavior issues and can't learn and can't focus. Um, what's going on there. It's all, it's been, it's been a theme in my brain for like probably 15, 20 years trying to understand that. And then um, I had my own kids. I had my first child and I had this like, ugh, this over, you know, we've all been through it. This overwhelm of like, ah, total lack of confidence, total like, ugh, I don't know what I'm doing. And, um, and with this, you know, matched with this drive of like trying to understand people and trying to understand children and trying to understand growth. And then, and then the heightened responsibility of now, well, now I have, now it's my own kid. So it's like even more, um, important that I figure this out. And um, so at that time, I, I just stopped. I stopped teaching and I was like, oh, like this is crazy. Um, and I decided, I just revamped. I just, I, I decided to go back to school and study, study health and nutrition and um, try to figure out more like, I was like, what are these underlying drivers? Like what's going on in the body? And um, so that was sort of how I got into, into nutrition. And then working with mothers just kind of seemed like a natural fit because of my interest in children, my, my own experience as a mom. And I guess just my own personal, um, the way I think is I try to break things down into systems. I was like, it, it, it hit me like probably in my first, in my first year of mothering, I was like, okay, this is crazy. This is super intense. I need a system. I need to figure out like, how to pull it all together so that I don't fall off the rails and I can feel like I'm doing a good job. Um, 
And it required like new conversations with my partner and new conversations with myself and a whole new framework for living how I wanted to live my life. It was huge, actually. This is, I guess, nine, 10 years ago. Um, and it led to, you know, major, major changes in my life, one of which is starting this business. Um, another one was moving <laughs> and like restructuring our lives. So it was big, but I won't get into the, those details. Um, but it sent me on this sort of trajectory of working with parents, trying to help them understand what's going on in the body so that they can kind of get a handle on what's happening and then how to take steps to, to support themselves, both, both for themselves and for their kids. And my tool is nutrition because that's what I understand most. Um, but, you know, there's always other factors, which I'm sure your other guests are covering. But I really try to, I also learned, you know, not too long ago that I can't do it all. <laughs> but we all have to come to this, yeah. this revelation at some point. Um, so I really just try to keep it to the, to the nutrition piece. Because I think it's a very, very powerful. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then try to refer it to other people like some of your guests who, who deal with some of the more social or other, other aspects of trying to keep it together as a mom. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, that's the whole idea here is that, you know, we can't do it all. It's impossible. As much as we want to. But we have it all for ourselves, like whatever that looks like for us is that, that it's possible. But part of that is asking for help and reaching out and connecting with other people whose gifts complement ours instead of being you know, with ours. So I and that's a real skill, right? Like learning how to reach out. It's like you, you have to get whopped on the head and having a baby is, you know, usually the whop, right? Of just like, ask for help, ask for help, ask for help. And to actually do it is really hard for, for many of us. Yeah. Well, especially with something that seems like it's supposed to be so natural, like, we naturally have children. Shouldn't we naturally know how to care for them? And, and th so that's actually one of the things is like, we eat food. Shouldn't we naturally know how to <laughs> eat ourselves? But it, you know, it's, that's so, um, it's so overwhelming for a lot of moms. And I know, um, I would love to hear you share some about, about the, especially that early childhood part, because this is one of the things that, that came up for me that you touch on about, um, about feeding the, the intolerances and issues like um, myself and and I, I've had um, clients of mine struggle with the the aspect of my child is uh, I'm breastfeeding my child is is sensitive to um, something but what and then you get on the internet and you start looking at all the things and all the things and suddenly I'm I'm not eating anything like trying to feed my dad, you can't actually produce milk, not eating anything. But yet it's like, there's this fear because there's this like physical response to the child being unhappy and uncomfortable. And it, it's so painful. You don't want them to be uncomfortable. And there's that fear of like, if I'm causing this and what do I do other than just stop eating? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, that doesn't work either. So it's really important to be systematic about it. So I guess one of the things I want to get across to your audience is that food is a really powerful tool for affecting um, how we think, how we feel, how we function, how our kids are functioning, how our kids are behaving. It really is a powerful tool much of the time, but it's not the only thing. And you can drive yourself absolutely crazy trying to figure out, oh, was it this food? Was it that food? Was it this food? Was it that food? And um, generate a heck of a lot of stress by doing that. And stress is another one of those factors. So it's like, yeah, okay, maybe you, maybe you took out 26 different foods, but it was so stressful to do that, that you created this energy in the house that, was your, that your, ch your children are responding to as well. So it's really important if... Um, it, it is a powerful tool, but it's also important to reach out for, for help if you need it, but be strategic and systematic about it so that it's not like, oh, well, I tried this. Well, and then it, that didn't work. So I tried this. Oh, that didn't work. So I tried this and that didn't work. But really, really sit down and think about it as a, as a plan, a strategy over like six months or three months or something like that. Um, so that you can, you want to know if by the end of the trial, did you do everything you could do? And you've, you know, either discovered the trigger or you've 
eliminated food as the trigger. You know what I mean? Like, because yeah. maybe, maybe it's not a food thing. Maybe it's something else, right? Yeah. Um, and even if it is the food thing, like maybe it's dairy or maybe it's wheat or something like that. The problem is not actually the food. The problem is the body's response to the food. So I'm always trying to get my clients to like refocus, to be like, okay, so, you know, maybe you have 36 allergies. It's not the food. It's your body's response to those foods. So taking them out is only part of the solution. Mm. It, it will help the body sort of, you know, relax a little bit, help inflammation relax a little bit. But the other part of the picture is to help the body tolerate those foods. Mm. Right. So, um, yeah. And that's kind of a little aha for some people I'll be like, Oh, so I'm not going to have to take those out forever. Well, not, not if we do, you know, body system repair. Right. Well, okay. So. That's a big aha for me, actually. I mean, I knew that, um, that at least with dairy, a big part of that is just the body's developmental stace, stace and, and needing, you know, the early development, um, just can't process that protein. Well, but, um, and so as it develops, it often becomes more able to, but I, I would love to hear more about how that plays in with, you know, as they get older and, and, you know, things that maybe aren't like, uh, like the, the natural development of your body, but like, where can we support our kids' health more in those areas without it yeah. depleting for us <laughs> at, the same, I know, it can be at the same time, you know? <laughs> Yeah. Well, the good news is that all the things that I, that I suggest parents do for their kids, I also suggest they do for themselves. They're the exact same strategies. Really um, <laughs> so that really simplifies things, right? It's like, you know, yeah. with minor tweaks, like, you know, there are some certain nutrients that are really important for kids that are, you know, they lose just because they're in this, you know, rapid state of, of growth and stuff. Um, or there's certain nutrient deficiencies that I like to fill the gaps with supplements and stuff that we might not give to the adults, but we'll give to the kids. But in terms of like nutritional strategy, mm -hmm. it's the same stuff. And um, I just want to, I'll tell you what the strategies are in a sec, but I want to just pick up on something that you said, which was, um, you know, that kids will grow out of, out of allergies. And that's true. I find it really interesting the, the take that a lot of a lot of people will come to me after having been to their allergist or been to their doctor and, and the doctor says they'll grow out of it or like you know 60 percent of kids grow out of or whatever and i'm like that's great and that's true but couldn't we just be a little bit more proactive and like just push the body in that direction rather than sitting and hoping that you know our kids grow out of it <laughs> right so when i teach kids when i teach parents about feeding babies um, I, I draw on all of that knowledge of be like, yeah, most babies are going to be just fine. You know, you just, you know, you give them wholesome, good, nourishing food and they'll be just fine. Um, and if, you know, if they have a response to dairy, you take the dairy out and, um, you know, a few years later you bring it back in and they're just fine. The body like, and, but that means that they have a strong immune system and that they have strong underlying um, gut flora and that the body can reset itself. The body wants to be able to be healthy. That's our natural trajectory is we want, we're programmed that way. We are perfect. You know, we have all the systems. Um, but sometimes those systems can get derailed a little bit because, you know, stress and toxins and chemicals and all those things. So why don't we do our very best to help keep the body on that path that it wants to be on by eliminating, you know, the stressors, right? And ensuring, you know, drawing on all of the new medical research about gut flora and blood sugar and, you know, certain nutrients that we need to keep our systems going. Let's just make sure that those are in place so that we can encourage the body on the path that it is probably already on mm -hmm. you know what I mean yeah so I, I I really like I want to I want to teach parents to be proactive so like you know an example would be does my child need a probiotic does my baby need a probiotic well I'm like you know what there's no research to suggest that it's harmful there's lots of research to suggest that it may be beneficial do, do they need it well 
it's hard to know because we, we can't see in there. We can look at, you know, symptoms and signs that suggest that, yeah, that's really a good idea. But in a, in a typically healthy child, we don't know. But let's maybe be proactive because it's more, it's, it, the possibility that they need it is there because we have so many stressors in our lives that deplete gut bacteria and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, and, it, and it's not shown to be harmful. So that's kind of a proactive thing. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Uh, so I, yeah, I want, I mean, I, I want to know, I want to know more of the proactive thing. Tell me more about like, what, what can I do? I mean, obviously, you know, the more I can do to, to be less stressed and I, I do have several people that are talking about those pieces, but uh, again, I mean, just thinking about food can be stressful um, in the early years and even going forward, I, I think it gets, I think it, it seems to be drop off a little bit when, when they just go to the pantry themselves. So I'm sure there's still the concern that they're grabbing things that you want them to be grabbing. But, um, but as far as like the, the, the younger things, what's, I, I, I got to ask this one because, because you mentioned it when we were first talking, I really want to know what the number one mistake that parents make. <laughs> I can't wait. I want to know what it is. Um, what's the number one mistake that parents, <laughs> and then maybe we can spin into, uh, into what some of the strategies that are the, the things that we can do instead. Okay. Well, I hope, I hope I don't let you down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I have I've worked with a lot of families and they come to me wanting to know how to feed their kids mm -hmm. and at some point in our conversation they either cry or they have this like deflated look or this exhausted look and we have to talk about how they are doing so I would say the number one uh, mistake is forgetting about yourself mm. forgetting that you can't have healthy and happy children if you are depleted anxious frustrated angry mother mm -hmm. right and I know a lot of your other guests are going to be talking about about that but um, it's you know it's like okay the oxygen mask you know the thing the oxygen mask you help yourself and then you help your kid it's totally unintuitive, right? If the oxygen masks and the plane's going down, I'm helping my kid, thank you very much, right? It's, it's our instinct. Um, and the same thing with food, it's like, oh, I, need to, I, need to, I need to fix or I need to, to uh, just do, and like how many of us feed everybody breakfast and then like it's 10 o'clock and we're like, oh, I need another cup of coffee, oh wait, I forgot to eat, yeah. right? We forget about ourselves. I don't know why that is, probably just because we're so busy. Um, but not only does that deplete you, but it, it sets up, it sets up a dynamic in the house. It sets up not so positive modeling in the house and, um, it just makes you feel awful mm -hmm. and you can't parent effectively. So mm -hmm. I really, really focus a lot of my time on trying to just bring down the pressure, bring down the stress by, like you said in your intro, teaching parents about how food functions in the body, because it's never about the food, it's always about the body. So there's some really important things to know about how the body functions that kind of like lets you just relax. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, I've got my bases covered. We're good. Mm -hmm. They're going to have a freezy or whatever, but we're good because I know how to mitigate the damage. Yeah. So I don't know. That was that absolutely <laughs> not disappointing at all because just like reminders to breathe, I find that I can never be reminded enough about self care and especially when regards to kids because just like you said, I mean it it is our our I think it's hardwiring honestly um, when it comes to children of like we are there to care for them and so it, it seems that counterintuitive like I've got to take care of me to take care of them, but like, I have to take care of them. They're my baby. They're my children, especially the, the less functional they are, or, you know, the younger they are, the less able they are to care for themselves. Um, yeah. And then we feel guilty when we do, when we do say, no, I'm sitting down and I'm having breakfast. I don't care. Like, 
we, we feel, or I'm locking myself in the bathroom so I can have a minute. And <laughs> like, I know you've all done that. Everybody's <laughs> done that. Potting. I mean, it's harder when they're little and they're like, I want to come in and see you potty. <laughs> I know, I know. I want you to understand the pottying thing. We're working on potty training. So, okay, fine. You can sit there. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it is, it, it is counterintuitive. Even yeah. though we're told to do it all the time, we're told, we're told, we're told. Um, we're, yeah, we're going against our instincts, but long run, like it's, it's, it's taking out a very high interest loan, yeah. right? When you, you're going to pay later. <laughs> Yeah, well, and, and teach our kids to do the same thing, which is definitely not what I want to do. Um, I mean, because we've seen that it, it works better when you're more resilient. And I know that that's something you talk a lot about is making the body resilient. Um, so tell us, tell us some strategies for doing that. Um, so just yeah. some of the simple things that, we, that the listeners and I can, can go off and do besides just remembering to eat breakfast. Lunch. Yeah, so I, I, I <laughs> that's it. <laughs> no, um, uh, okay, so I said at the beginning, I like to think in structures and systems, and the, the way I got through my first, you know, five or six years or more um, of mothering was to ve- develop a framework so I could really quickly be efficient in my thinking to be like, you know, what do I need to do? Oh, I'm feeling out of balance. What do I need to do? Got it. Okay, good, done. Um, so that's the kind of stuff that I teach. And when it comes to, um, food and the food and feeding part, it's, it, it boil, it really boils down to reduce the stressors and improve the body's capacity to be resilient. Mm -hmm. That's the teeter totter that we're on. When we get sick, we have too many stressors going on and we have low resilience. When we feel healthy and vibrant, our resilience is strong and our stressors are mitigated. Mm. So that's, that's, the, that's the big framework. This is what I write about in Raising Resilience. And um, so the next step is, okay, well, how do you identify those things and how do you support what you're supposed to support? So on the stressor side, there's social stressors. There's stressors of relationship and there's, you know, so let's just talk about kids. I mean, like I say, this applies to adults too, but let's just talk about the kids. There's their, you know, their relationship with you or their siblings or their teachers or all of, all those things. There's um, environmental stressors. Like, you know, some kids get really stressed out by clutter and broken things everywhere. Some kids like to be really organized. Some, it depends on your kid, but there's environmental things. Colors sometimes irritate people or, um, uh, um, fragrances and smells sometimes that's a that's a stressor so things in the environment I only touch on those really briefly because I I think there's some amazing you know psychologists and psychotherapists who who really work on the social and environmental stressors but then there's the physical stressors right there's the things like food additives and colors and allergies and um, yeast and um, uh, what are some of the others, um, toxic metals and things that we ingest through our food that can be real stressors on the body because for the simple fact that our body has to deal with them. Mm -hmm. And for most of us, our body can deal with them. We can deal with a certain amount of them unless we have some kind of, you know, genetic issues or impaired capacities and stuff. Um, but you know, the question remains like, if you lower them, you're going to be in better shape. (laughs) right? Why rely again? Why rely on the body's ability to deal with them? They're a burden on the body. So let's remove them as much as we can. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the stressor side of things. And then on the other side of the teeter totter, which is to, to help the body regain its balance, regain its, um, its resilience. Um, there, I talk about three core strategies and this is where I think it really simplifies pe- people's lives because if you can if you can do a little bit of each of these three things, you're supporting the body. Okay, so again, it's not about the foods; it's about strategies. So that you want to know the three things? Yeah, I do. Okay. I, want, I really, I really want to know the three things. <laughs> I, I hope it's clear so far because I think of a lot about this, but then I hope it comes across. Yeah, absolutely. So the three things are, first of all, nutrient density. So looking at your plate and saying, like, 
can this be any more nutrient dense? And I sometimes compare like, okay, imagine two farmed eggs far, uh, fried in canola oil with, um, you know, bacon and white bread with butter, with margarine. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a fairly nutrient poor, although it, you know, it looks, it's, it's whole food. It's real food. Um, for the most part, maybe, you know, <laughs> um, but it's fairly nutrient poor and calorie dense. And then you can change that into pastured eggs, fried in coconut oil, um, with additive free sausage with no fillers, um, with whole grain bread that has flax and, you know, seeds in it and nut butter. So it looks like a fairly similar breakfast, but one is far more nutrient dense than the other. Mm. Now I know people are probably saying, Oh, my, my kids won't eat that. So that's a, we can talk about that later if we have time, like how do you get your kids to eat the nutrient dense food? But this is the concept I, I like to get across is like, what are some ways you can take a soup that your kids love and make it more nutrient dense, right? Adding, adding some, you know, seaweed into the, into the um, broth as it cooks, you take it out later, you're not eating it, but all of those minerals are coming into the soup or using, you know, your homemade broth instead of the broth that's in the Tetra pack as your base or adding in different kinds of vegetables or, you know, like little, lots of little tips that I, that I give people to just take your favorite foods and try to oomph, the nutrition, the nutrient density. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that, that's the first strategy, right? And that way you can be like, okay, you know what? If, and, and some people, for some people, it's like, okay, commit to having a nutrient dense dinner two times a week, three times a week, which depends on your starting point, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, it, and just make little goals of like, or try like two strategies and commit to them and like, you know, get it going. You got to take baby steps because mom's, are under an insane amount of pressure. Um, so you have to, you have to get, kind of pick the low hanging fruit, like look at what's, what's doable. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's totally something that, that I do as a coach is look at, you know, instead of like, I, you know, let's see where we're at you know, nutrient wise or, you know, with our goals, whatever the goal is. And you think uh, I'm at, you know, one being the, the lowest, the furthest away from it and 10 being at it, like I'm at a two. Well, if you're focused on the 10, you're going to, you're going to get, you know, you're going to get disappointed. You're going to try it and you're going to, I didn't get it, whatever. And not, not going to follow it. So, all right, why two? And then what does three look like? So that you know, what, what is your actual starting point? Why did you rank it there? And then what's the one step up, just one step up, not 10, one step up. Yeah. So yeah, that makes perfect sense because it's more achievable and it's not, you're, you're going to see progress without, um, you know, beating yourself up because you didn't do it. It's much For more sure. doable. So yeah, I love that. So yeah. Hey. And there's a, there's a mindset thing there too, right? Of like keeping your mind open to possibility because I get a lot of people come into my office and they're like, well, my kids won't eat that. Oh, they won't eat that. They won't, they won't do that. We can't do that. And, and you got to take a step back and be like, you know what, like, let's go with what is possible. Move yourself forward. And I've had clients have taken them through and it's like, oh my God, I never would have thought this was possible because as you change your diet, your physiology actually changes yeah. and you want different foods. Yeah. So yeah. Especially with the younger kids, the like younger kids are like little sponges, right? So they're getting used to what foods are supposed to taste like. And if they start to think that foods are supposed to taste like X, like the nutrient poor, salty, fatty, you know, whatever foods, um, it's really hard to shift that later. Mm -hmm. So particularly important for the young kids. Okay. So that's, that's strategy number one. <laughs> Oh, I feel like I'm yeah, rambling. Okay, but yeah. Uh, so strategy number two. Strategy number two is um, is is to stabilize blood sugar. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of great research about blood sugar and how you know this this whole cascade happens when your blood sugar does this, and it can lead to all kinds of behavior changes and weird things, sleep things. Um, with the you know I've I've had some people like just see remarkable 
shifts in behavior, mostly with older children, but sleep is a big thing. If, if you've got babies who aren't, aren't sleeping well, yeah. it could be, they're just, their, their, their blood sugar is learning how to regulate, you know, and, and, uh, and it's important. I, I feel like it's important to get up and feed them regularly throughout the night, as painful as it might be. That's really important for their blood sugar training. So, you know, having them sleep through the night isn't necessarily a great thing. It's not necessarily a bad thing either, but um, just for those of you who are struggling through the first sort of two years of them waking up wanting to nurse and, you know, needing to get up with them, you're actually really helping their blood sugar. <laughs> so keep at it. You could do it. It does get better. They will sleep. Mm-hmm. Um, so... Yeah. So the second thing is, is stabilizing blood sugar, making sure breakfast is strong, making sure there's a lot of fiber in the diet. Um, uh, you know, making sure you, you're mixing your, your proteins and your fats and your low glycemic carbohydrates, um, trying to reduce refined sugar as much as you can. And we can talk all day about sugar, but, um, you know, even just trying to pull in some of the lower glycemic sweeteners, Mm -hmm. um, are uh it is is helpful to just keep keep blood sugar stable because when you do that you you actually affect your whole hormonal system and hormones affect everything hormones mm-hmm. affect everything mm-hmm. uh, so i'm really curious about this just because you know i mean i have a i have a five-year-old who um kind of goes nuts in the evenings and we try and feed pretty healthy but like I mean, we, and we don't do dessert. We, we tried that like a couple times every so often we'll try dessert and like, no, we cannot do dessert anywhere near sleeping time. Even though, you know, you think, oh, the sugar, they'll have a sugar rush and then they'll crash and then they'll sleep. And it's like, sometimes that sounds tempting, but, um, we just, we can't do it, but he still kind of bounces off the walls. And so I'm thinking like, you know, considering what we feed at dinner time and you know he loves like mac and cheese and things like that and, you know it's like those are easy go-tos but I'm wondering you know like if switching perhaps the pasta to a different kind of pasta maybe um like a more nutrient dense pasta that I, I don't know I'm that's I'm curious about that like as far as the sugars go and the carbs go because I know carbs turn into sugars and things mm-hmm. like that like um, well, sugar is interesting. I have a whole section in my book about sugar because yeah, it can, it can, it can influence immediately, right? Like, like it spikes your blood sugar and you see the change immediately, but it can also have a very slow incremental um, effect because it depletes nutrients because it, uh, it influences your hormones um, for, for a lot of it depletes gut bacteria. So more sort of insidious ways that sugar affects. So it's not necessarily, Oh, eat the sugar. And then you see the problem. Mm. Um, but a couple of things with, with a kid like that, it's like, well, it's, it's probably take your focus away from dinner and bring it to breakfast and think about, think about how the blood blood sugar is doing this throughout the day. Hopefully, hopefully it's kind of doing this, Mm -hmm. but for some kids it's doing this. And then by the end of the day, they've had so much stress. It's almost like they've had so much stress build up that it's like, you know, so really look like looking at the whole picture to be like, well, it's not eat this, feel this, it's eat this and feel this. Right. Okay. So, um, yeah. So focusing on, on, on eating incrementally throughout the day, um, making sure there's lots of fiber throughout the day, lots of protein at breakfast. Um, and then desserts are interesting because desserts don't need to be sweet. We have this kind of thing about desserts have to be like, you know, <laughs> double chocolate fudge or whatever, but, um, you yeah, know, you can, no, <laughs> <wow>. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, desserts can be, I, I feel like desserts should be incorporated into the meal and they should be nutrient dense as well. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. So swapping, like trying some of the low glycemic sweeteners like coconut nectar or, or xylitol or something like that, um, or stevia, mm-hmm. uh, making sure there's fiber in mm. In, in your dessert, like there's no reason why, you know, if you're making, I don't know, what's a, what's a common dessert? Like I actually, sometimes I make ice cream in our Vitamix and I like put flax seeds in there and put some vegetables in. Like there's no reason not yeah. to, if, if it does, and it, often it doesn't taste, doesn't you change. Can hide it. <laughs> you can hide it. Like, you can hide it. Why not? 
I mean, I want my kids to like food for food, so I don't want to hide everything. But in some cases, you know, if you can, if you can make a dessert that's going to be more uh, blood sugar friendly, yeah. why not? Yeah, yeah. Okay, awesome. Okay. I, I really about this, especially the breakfast stuff, because we're often rushing out of the, the house. And I, I'm wondering, actually, when you say that, I'm thinking, oh, yeah, I mean, cereal even with fruit, that's not high fiber, but like the fiber, but like not high protein or like the smoothie, it's got fruits and vegetables in it, but it's not high protein. So yeah, put some protein, put some coconut oil, get some healthy fats in there. Mm -hmm. And five-year-olds are notorious for not wanting to stop, right? Like I'm not hungry. I'm not hungry. I'm not hungry. Cause they just want to play, which is what they do. That's what they're programmed to do. So that's fine. But, um, you know, really just t structuring it as a parent being like, no, it's time we sit, we yeah. calm down, you know, it's, it's, they do that at school really well. Like they get into a rhythm, right. But oh. at home for some reason, it's like, oh, okay, fine. Oh. <laughs> I know. I know. So I want, before we run out of time, I want to make sure we get to number three. So <laughs> okay. I don't want to co-op the time with, with my, my own stuff. So I'm sure there are plenty of moms out there listening who can totally relate. So but yeah. Number well, number <laughs> <laughs> so number three, again, we're talking about like the three core strategies for supporting the body's resilience. Um, number three is supporting digestion. Mm -hmm. And this is a huge buzz right now. There's tons of info. Anybody who can go on to Google, you'll learn about digestion, gut flora. And, mm -hmm. um, because this is the forefront of, of medicine, really. Like it's, it's of healthcare. It's the gut bacteria. They seem to be involved in everything. And um, including blood sugar. So sometimes the kids who like can't manage their blood sugar, or sometimes it's, it's a gut flora problem. Um, so when it comes to digestive function, it's, there are so many things in our world that deplete gut flora and impair digestion. The biggest is stress. And I, I, I get really riled up because I, I, see, I, I see kids becoming so stressed. Yeah. We like, you know, this is with the over scheduling and push, push, push and rush, rush, rush. And they stimulate, learn, do this, da, da, da. And, and, and it's like, there's no need, like, oh, let's just all take a breath and let's just all, you know, relax. Like families that don't eat together anymore because their schedules don't permit or they have to go to soccer practice or dad gets home late or blah, blah, blah. It's like, we need to really take a second and, um, but back to digestion, stress really, influences digestive process and if you're not digesting you can be eating all the greatest foods in the world you're not using them you're not absorbing them you're not you're not initiating the processes in the body to make use of these foods mm -hmm. and you're accumulating waste because the digestive process has two roles one is to break down foods and use them and the other is to eliminate waste and both are really important i see a lot of constipated kids and um, so, you know, stool is just sitting there in the colon and it feels awful, right? So of course you're going to see behavior issues and, um, and uh, it, it, it just affects, it affects the body in, in lots of different ways. So the third strategy is support digestion. So, you know, um, bringing in fermented foods, if you can, probiotics, um, fiber, phytonutrients, plant nutrients are really important for those little gut bacteria. Um, again, de-stressing, taking time to go to the bathroom, sit, relax, digest, um, all of these things to, to really help digestion. So, so the point that I'm getting across is if you, can, if you can implement a few of those tips in each of those, so there's the three strategies, the blood sugar, the nutrient density, and the um, digestion, you know, find the low hanging fruit. Like maybe it's really difficult. You can't like introduce sauerkraut, but maybe you could introduce a probiotic or, you know, maybe a little bit extra flaxseed and, and hemp seeds to get fiber. Um, uh, maybe some more vegetables. Maybe you need like a fruit vegetable kind of supplement to get those phytonutrients in there. Maybe that's the easy way to do it. But if you can touch on these three things, even just a little bit, you're, you're supporting the body in its ability to do what it knows how to do, which is learn and grow and, and, and progress.
you know? Mm -hmm. So reduce the stresses, increase those strategies, and you are effectively helping your child be healthier. Wow. And, and do them for yourself too, because they're the same things. Yeah, totally. Especially when they come home with all of the bugs from school, <laughs> which we have one running through the house right now. Like, and I don't mean lice, because that's a whole other thing, but like the colds. Yeah, I just realized when I said the bugs, I was like, oh, no. Mm. Well, but yeah. this is the thing. Like when, when, like transition times, when they go back to school in September, yeah. like that's a really stressful time. So you need to pay a little bit closer attention to your three core strategies. When things are running along smoothly, like the middle of the summer, everybody's happy and healthy. You can let things drop a little bit, but watch your kids. And if it seems like, oh, someone's starting the sniffles or someone's start the behavior starting to get off the wall a little bit, then it's time to like pull it in, regroup, go back to those three core strategies. Okay, how can I tweak this a little bit? Mm -hmm. So because none of us is going to do this all the time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Like nobody's perfect. I'm not perfect. Like sometimes I look at our dinner and I'm just like, oh, I hope, I hope there's no hidden camera here because oh my God, I'm a nutritionist. <laughs> because like it's just not going to happen every day. But you know, if it happens more often than not, you're in good shape. Yeah. Well, and then the, the more of a habit it becomes, the easier it becomes too. It's always that initial shift that's, that's the hardest part to overcome. So yeah. And if, and if, and one more thing, just if, if like, you know, if my kids like Halloween, for example, or, or my kids go to a birthday party and there's like tons of sugar, I'm just like, Oh my God, this is crazy. I have a choice to make about either be like the hard ass, sorry, um, nutritionist, you know, holistic mom and be like, no, you can't, you can't, you can't. Or I can say, okay, this is going to be a huge stressor tomorrow. Their behavior is going to be off the wall. They're not going to sleep well. They're going to be constipated and you know, someone's going to get sick. I need to focus on my three core strategies a little bit more for the next week because I know we've just had a major stressor of all of this sugar, but I understand what that's going to do to the body. And I have strategies. I've got my supplement baskets going to come out. I'm going to, you know, go to my super nutrient dense meals that we, I love. And, you know, it's understanding the body and having tools to respond to life. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that. I love that. And then, you know, kind of that balance between, you know, the stress, the social stress of not, you know, oh, mom didn't let me and the relationship stress and you mitigate that, but you do have to still deal with the others. So it's finding that balance. Um, and this is a case that I think balance in some ways more applies than some other ways, but balance yeah, is, a, is a dynamic so process, of, you know, the, yeah, totally. So Anyway, thank you so much. Um, just to, we, we have very little time left, but to recap really quickly, um, what are like the two, three things you really want the audience to walk away from this interview with? Um, I think one is that food is a very, very powerful tool and it's at your disposal. And um, if you can get the basics, get these things implemented, then, you know, if in some cases you need to go over and above, you need to go to the doctor, you need to get testing, you need to, you know, whatever, get some, some, some supplements and stuff. But if you can get this stuff covered, you are way further ahead. And in a lot of cases, that's all you're going to need to do. Just improve the nutrient density, stabilize the blood sugar and, and improve digestion. Um, and that's going to solve a lot of problems. But so I, I, I do want you to know that food is a really powerful tool that's in your hands. What you do in your kitchen really, really matters. Um, and that, you know, reach out for help if you need help with this. Um, but there's a lot of clutter out there. It's like you do a Google search and you're like, uh, you know, feeding babies or whatever. And then you're going to get like, Ugh. and so I, 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 I think moms really need to get good at developing a filter mm -hmm. to be like, take a good look at who you are, what your values are, what resonates with you and only let things in your filter that work for you. If what I'm saying just like doesn't resonate, like filter me out and don't look at me again. Right. And find the people that resonate with you and just filter out the rest because there's way too much there are way too many people shouting at you telling you what to do <laughs> but if it does resonate then 
you have an awesome free gift that people can take another step into the support that you can offer them. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I really want to bring bring families together who for whom this resonates. And so um, I have a couple of membership areas and uh, I've got core online courses. I do one on one coaching. Um, what I want to offer people, because I know you're all moms who are you're here. So you are like trying to do your best and really have good intentions. Um, uh, I want to give you access to my basic level of of the Raising Resilience site. And in there is a lot of, you know, sometimes we, I, I say there's like, you know, too much information, but sometimes we just don't know what we don't know, right? So uh, in, in that area, I put um, a lot of my basic handouts, little video clips on how to reframe. So you're thinking in terms of resilience and you're thinking in terms of core strategies. Um, I've got some expert interviews in there. So I, I, as I do this work, I, I, I was like, you know, meeting all these people. I was like, oh my God, did you know what this could do for you? Did you? And they're totally outside of my scope of practice, but parents need to know, like, what does a chiropractor do? Or what is body talk all about? Or what are essential oils? So I've got some, um, some interviews in there and I'm, I'm putting more in. And there's recipes in there to, you know, what does this actually look like in your, in your life? So I want to give, give people access to that. And then if, you, if they need more, you know, more guidance, more coaching, more hand-holding. I'm always available for, for, um, for that as well. Awesome. Thank you so much. And really, I mean, this has been so awesome. Um, and as a reminder to everyone, the email that you were sent with this video has a link for you to connect, you know, where you got the video, you'll be able to access Jess's free gift. So check that out. And this concludes today's interview of Motherhood Unlimited. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. And be sure to tune in tomorrow for another exciting, inspirational, and helpful interview from Motherhood Unlimited. I look forward to having you all with us. Thank you. Bye.